I literally have thousands of dollars in camera gear, which I essentially got for free or I paid very little for it, using techniques that I thought were fairly common knowledge. But recently I released a video about a Fujifilm X-T1 that I got for $290, and immediately I got comments saying it was never that cheap, you can't get it for that price. Not only did I buy it for that price, but since I published that video, even though the prices have gone up, I found deals that are even better than the one that I got for $290. So if you're somebody that's on a really tight budget, but you want to have high quality camera gear, doing what I did and have done to build up my base level of gear, which actually allowed me to go out and do professional photo, professional video, build this YouTube channel in the first place. I'm just gonna tell you how all I did all that. And actually the techniques I've used are very, very simple and anyone can do them. The first thing we need to do is establish what used camera gear is worth. And this is the one thing that really rung out to me seeing the comments from my Fujifilm X-T1 video is people saying, no, 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 you can't get it for $290. That's a $500 camera. That's a $600 camera. People saying it was never $290. This is the way that we have a look and establish what the range of prices that used camera gear is selling for. It's a super powerful tool and it's very, very easy to use. You go onto eBay for whatever country you happen to be in, and we'll say eBay.com for the United States, and you type in Fujifilm X-T1. You will then get a list of what is available for sale right now. And at the time of shooting this video, the prices are going to be anywhere between sort of $450 and $600 as a rule, the stuff that comes up. What we want to do is we want to go to the left-hand side of the frame. We want to go down a little bit, and there will be a little tick box that you can select which says sold items. Once you tick that, it will get rid of all the stuff that's for sale right now and will only display the items that have been sold and the prices will be in green. And if you do that, what you'll find is there definitely are people out there paying four, five or $600 for these cameras. But in the past month, you will find a number of sales around the 300 to $350 mark. And so this will really help us establish what is the lowest price we could possibly expect to pay for whatever we're searching for and what is the highest price we could possibly expect to pay. One thing that's very important that I want you to know about is when a piece of equipment sells for well under what eBay's algorithm recognizes as sort of fair market value, like somebody got a super, super bargain on that purchase, it will not show it in this list. It'll just wipe it out, it'll disappear. And a couple days ago, I went and searched and I found a Fujifilm X-T1 with the 18 to 55 kit lens and that sold for $350. That's an even better deal than the $290 I paid for the Fujifilm X-T1 that I've got here. Because I think that lens is probably worth anywhere between, I mean, on the cheap side, 150 bucks, maybe $200. So you could sell the lens and now all of a sudden you've got the camera and you've only paid $150 for the camera deal, uh, camera itself. So that's a much better deal than what I got. But when I went and searched again, that was gone. And that's because the algorithm has recognized that that was too good a deal to show to the average person who's doing what I'm telling you to do right now. And that might stop them from buying some future stuff because they're holding on for that crazy, crazy good deal. So just know that that lowest price isn't necessarily the lowest price. There might have been some better bargains out there, but it kind of sets a benchmark for, hey, if I bide my time and keep an eye on it, this is the price that I should be able to pay. Once you've done that, the next thing you wanna do is try to find a piece of gear that you can buy at that price point. And on eBay, if you go do a search, let's say we type in Fujifilm X-T1 and we hit search, at the top of the search, after it's done the search, there will be a little heart there. You can click that heart and tell it, make this a saved search. It will then give you the ability to uh, select to send email updates. I don't know if there's a text update uh, option or there's also like an update through the app option. If you just turn on all of those, anytime a used X-T1 comes on the market, you will get a notification. And what you will notice in the most recent list of Fujifilm X-T1s that sold, the two that were around the $350 mark 
Both of those were buy it nows. So that means somebody listed it buy it now for 350 bucks. Somebody probably had a notification set up. The notification came through because they've been keeping an eye on the market. They knew 350 bucks was absolutely a bargain and they probably bought it straight away. So this is going to even save you from going through the auctions sometimes. Sometimes the price will be cheap and it'll just be a straight out buy it now. The next thing you can do is once you've established what is the lowest price that you could probably expect to pay for this piece of camera gear. Go off eBay and go look on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. eBay is a global platform which is going to have people competing from all over the world for those sales. On Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, they are more localized. So you're probably going to go to somebody's door and buy that piece of equipment from them. Because that of that, the local prices are often lower than the ones on eBay where the whole world is competing. In addition to that, somebody who's not on eBay looking at those prices and is just selling everything on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist might not actually know the value of what they're selling. And often they'll just throw it up as a, this is for sale and it'll be a very, very low price. I would encourage you, if you do find a low price on one of these local platforms, don't try to negotiate, just offer full price if it's already a bargain. I often see in myself in the past what I'd done is I'd try, oh, it's 350 bucks, I know that's a bargain. Maybe I can get it for 330 or 300. And while I was negotiating, somebody who knew 350 was a bargain would just come in and offer full price before I managed to get to the doorstep and buy it and they just sell it out from under me. So if you find it and it is a good deal, just offer them full price. When you show up on the day, if you get there, if it's not exactly what you thought or is a bit more scraped up or you don't think it's worth the price, you can always negotiate down based on the condition once you're there. But if you start haggling ahead of time on an item that's already a bargain, the chances are that you're going to miss out on that purchase. The other thing that you really should do to save yourself some time and effort is when you're looking, whether it be on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, don't just look at the photos, which you should do, zoom in, look at them in detail go and read the description as well and make sure they haven't put any red flags in there. It's been damaged, it doesn't work, or this setting flakes out, or sometimes the camera turns off on its own. A lot of people just look at the photos and the titles and they go from there. Go and read that description in detail because you might save yourself a lot of headache and heartache and effort going in to a camera that, that really it's got a problem with it that you would sort of rule it out of you buying it. Once you know the prices of the used gear and what you should be paying for this used gear, this is where it sets us up to end up getting gear for free. And what you'll find is often people will not just list a camera body, they will list a camera body, two or three lenses, maybe a flash, maybe a tripod. The more things that are generally put into a bundle like this, the cheaper they're going to be per item. And as a rule, if you find a camera selling with a lens and you buy the camera and lens together as a combination, you generally should expect to pay, say we're paying full price for the camera body. Say the fair market value is 350, you're gonna pay 350 for the camera body. But then maybe you have a lens that the fair market value is 200. There's probably only an extra $100 on that deal to get the camera lens included. So you're probably gonna spend say 450 for the camera body and lens together. If you then take the camera body and sell it off for 350, you now have your $200 lens which you effectively paid $100 for. So I generally find if I'm buying a camera body and lens together, you will often find that in the end, you pay, you get about a 50% discount on either the camera body or the lens, depending on how you look at it. Because when you package these things, the price almost always comes down. And when you're selling, you should almost never sell as a package. You should part it out. This gets even more extreme the more things that are in the package. As a rule, if I find a camera camera body with two lenses, that will generally allow me to part that out and sell the items and end up with one item from that group uh, of items or that package for free. And in this case, it might be the lens, sell the camera body and one of the lenses, I get one of the lenses for free, or I sell two of the lenses and I get the camera body for free. And I literally have thousands and thousands of dollars of camera gear that has been built up in doing this. Now, I know that this does require the money up front to, to do this and to buy the gear and then turn around and sell it. But for somebody that can extend themselves that little bit, and I would suggest 
start with cheaper gear. Start with lower price uh, APS-C camera bodies that are 10 years old. You might find that you actually build this up into a part-time income, and eventually that gives you the money to buy more expensive gear. This is something that I've also done over the years. Now I'm so busy and I have so much work that I can do that makes me more money than this, I don't do it. But I built up my base level of gear that allowed me to go out and do paid shoots, build this YouTube channel almost exclusively with this technique of buying packages and parting stuff out. Now I know not everybody's gonna have the time and patience to do something like this. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. These are 10 ultra low budget lenses that you can buy brand new right now that can completely transform the type of photos and videos that you're capturing.